Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Dow's down 13. Nasdaq's off 30. S&P's a flat. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kankstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kankstad, what's going on? Good morning, guys. You want to talk about the yen, your favorite currency today? You know what I'm so... You just picked this out of my head. I was going to stop with you because this 109 29 10930 is driving me out of my mind, man, because that, that number, if it goes over it, I'll be in trouble in the gold market. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? I think that you might have a good shot at that happening. Okay. There might be some new highs. So you might, I think that might be something to definitely pay attention to. Yeah, no, I, it's charging into it. I mean, it failed the first time, right? It came up there again right. yesterday and I was just laying there, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, here's something I want to I point out to you. The dollar index looks like it's made a nice little turn. Except for the past couple of days, it's had a nice little bounce after it made some uh, new move lows on the daily chart. Yeah. And ironically, the yen actually, where the dollar index has been trading lower for, since basically October 1st. Most of your major currencies have gotten a little bit of a lift in that period, okay? Except for the dollar yen. The dollar yen has been a bull in a, in a falling dollar index. Um, but we've had a little bit of divergence, though, because... If you look at the yen chart over the past couple of days, we've had a nice explosive rally off of that last uh, higher move low. Yes. And that's all in the wake of a little dollar bounce, too. So they've kind of gone in tandem there. But I think that that's going to actually fall apart. The dollar index is going to fall apart, and then we're going to still see the yen go higher. The dollar yen, that is. So when you look at the dollar yen, I mean, the, I guess you, my benchmark here is that, that 109.32. The last time we made it up to 109.29, yesterday you made it 109.24. Where are you looking? If we do break that, where where, do you, where are you looking that you, you might be that maybe might be able to run to? Oh, I think that if we breach that, I think that we're going to start to establish a new base, and I think we're going to be up in the 110, 111, 112 handle yeah. maybe by the end of the year. Right, because that 112, that's the next area, right? That goes back yeah. to April of 2019. Okay. Yeah, and it would take about it would, it's going to take about a month and a half to two months to get there. I think. Yeah. Well, so. we'll see where that shakes out, man, because that, that, that would be a tough one for gold. There's no doubt about We've that. We've seen the reactions, sure. yeah. yeah. That, the, the gold sure. market takes conniptions, folks, when the yen gets weaker. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's good, it's good for your equity traders out there because if the, yen, if the dollar yen is going in that direction, our exports will be doing better, you know? Oh, yeah. No, no, I'm with you there. And what, about, what are you looking at with the euro and the pound? Uh, the euro and the pound, okay, now there I think we're going to start to see a little bit more of strength, but not in that big of a volatile fashion, though. I don't think the euro can climb that high. I think the dollar index is going to keep on going lower, which will push the, the euro and the pound both higher. Brexit stuff, I mean, we're not even going to talk about that today. I mean, it's... <laughs> right? Why not? You know? We got a full month of the election, man. We've been, Plenty talk of time. We've been talking knows. about it for two years. I know. Three. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. It's like, especially after Brexit not happening on the 31st. But I think this is good, though, because I think the dollar index really is your guide. Remember, we're heading in, we're in fourth quarter. We're going into the end of the year. We're going to have a lot of balancing come the end of the month, getting ready for year end. You know, so it would make sense that right now we have a little rally to sell in the dollar index, which would push the euro higher, maybe get it back up to that, like, 113, 114, 115 area, but I don't. I see it being like if you look at the range in the euro and like the Swiss. The Swiss is the only currency that actually gets any real range on a daily basis. And now we have the pound where it's floating underneath highs and its range is getting really tight. It always scares me when you see the pound having tight ranges, even in slow markets. Okay, let me ask you, um, Teddy. When we talk, uh, you know, at the end of the year with the balancing, right? How exactly does that work? I, I you know, like. Is it companies that they're going to bring dollars back and euros back? Or how does that work coming into the end of the year? Okay, well, then, you, okay, that's a good question because on the company basis, you do have a currency balancing where people may want to reposition themselves for January, especially with their books. Sometimes you want to end the year on one note in one way just to set yourself up for the beginning of your first quarter. Okay. You know? There's definitely a balancing, and that depends on each individual. Like, if let's say you're a coffee importer from the United States and you're coming out of Brazil or you know out of South America, yes. you know, you definitely might want to have something to do with your contracts, depending on your positions and any type of deliveries you may have. You right. Know? <clears throat> and then you have something like an auto manufacturer. It's a totally different case, you know. So. But they all they the majority. I mean, I've I've read about it so many times. But so the majority 
whether it's large companies, they, they basically like to do that at the end of the year. I wonder if that's an otter and a what's it, what it's for. Do you know what I'm saying? To, to really get probably a better understanding of the balance sheet. I think so. I think because it doesn't matter what their accounting set cycle is, they all go on quarter basis no matter what. Yeah. So I think it's really for that um, purpose, you know. And then you have your banks as well. They do a lot of balancing too on month end and quarter end, let alone year. Okay. Okay. So this currency but, business is pretty cool business. I mean, it's been fluctuating pretty intensely. That's real volatility. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But like I said, I think that you're not going to see much of like, in the, in the year, like I think the yen is where you have your biggest potential for swings on a daily basis and even on a trending basis because the euro, no matter what the news is, like they tried to break it down and you didn't get any severe breaks. Like it's only because we're looking at it on it's, the volatility has been so low that it looks like it's actually been swinging around the past like few weeks, especially. And it really hasn't been, you know, if you look yeah. at the ranges, right? You know, whereas so the yen, just as you're saying. Much the yen, the, the, how much in the game for you? Yeah, no, the yen's had some real movement, man. I mean, that, that movement, <laughs> you know, has been when we're open, not even when, you know, the, the bottom line when they're open, you know, versus and that, that's kind of intriguing and the aspect that there was more action yesterday when our markets were open versus their markets, you know? So right. someone's buying it, right, or selling it. Yeah, it was getting weaker, sure. someone's selling it. Okay, right. Pretty wild, man. No doubt about that. So I, I'm, I'm with you with the gold trade, too. Like, I'm watching that as well. Like, I think that we're coming to a nice little uh, friction point for that. Yeah, well, you know, it, it hasn't broken a swing yet. I mean, it's, what's so intriguing, the gold trade to me is just like the bond trade. It mm -hmm. came down fast and furious, but right. September 13th, that benchmark, neither one of them broke that benchmark. And the last two times they came down, you know, they basically came down and uh, what ended up happening uh, with that with that baby, uh, I guess gold is... That's on, October 1st. October 1st yeah. and the bonds uh, September 13th. Okay. Um, you, hit the, you hit the day on the head right there. October 1st was a big turning point for uh, currencies, interest rates, and metals. Yeah. 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 So, you know, to me, if you we, when you can't make it to the swing point, even if you, have, you know, you get some juice behind it, it's like, okay, why not? That means that there's buyers that are sitting there, you know? So... And then, of course, the bonds. <laughs> that, that, that's 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 just that's going to be a story that's been going to be written in, in a huge way, you know. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, pretty crazy. It's it's. We're not even talking about oil. Remember how we used to use talk about oil? We haven't even talked about that in a while. For some reason, that's kind of off the t table right now. It's tough to compete when other markets are rocking and rolling. But oil, yeah. And we just had right. We just had the oil numbers steady at 10:30. It's like almost an <laughs> eight million barrel build. Bill. So we mm -hmm. might see a little lower price That's, today, but we'll find out, man. That is, I'm um, happy every time I go to the pumps lately. Right? Yeah, Wes, and we were talking about that with Kevin Hinks. Same, it's, it's so true, man. I mean, it's, 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 it's a big deal. It's cash to the bottom line. Well, listen, man, you have a great one, a safe one. And, folks, you can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, we look forward to having you next Wednesday. Thanks, guys. You have a good day. Thanks, have Teddy. You too, man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow down 14. NASDAQ up 32. S&P's flat. Come right back.